Hey YouTube, Dawson Matter here and welcome to my review for the Dragon Ball Super Dragon Stars figures series 7 and 8. These are two waves that go together to create the Brawly big, big a figure? Big a figure guys! Build a figure that's in the back there. Uh, this wave here is comprised of regular Vegeta in the outfit from like the Frieza, you know the Resurrection F Saga, there we go, where he's got like the, the black version of his uh, Earth Saiyan armor and then the little symbol there. You got Ultra Instinct Goku, you have Super Saiyan Gohan, you have Future Trunks regular version, regular Vegito, and regular Goku Black. So it's a lot of like buying figures again because they have different heads, which really bothers me. Like, it's such a milking thing. Like, I kind of wish that they just, you know, had different outfits and then you could just swap the heads like, okay, this is Vegeta with regular with this armor, then the other one is Super Saiyan, and then just swap their heads. But I mean, that, I guess you can kind of do that. But anyway, that's enough rambling. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Like, I was kind of excited for some of this stuff in this wave, but it's a little disappointing, uh, to be honest. Uh, here's regular Vegeta, not one of the two exciting things about this wave, although I really like this armor. I liked this armor a lot when we saw it first in Resurrection F, and I wish this was his main, like, outfit in Dragon Ball Super. I kind of hated that we reverted back to the old, like, Cell Saga outfit, because I thought this was really cool. I thought it looked neat. Um, the figure, detail-wise, is pretty solid. Like, I think they got the colors pretty well on the suit. Um, the face does look, you know, all the faces look pretty solid in terms of capturing the animation look, but... I'm just not a fan of some of their fixed poses. Like, this one kind of looks like, it's like Mad Vegeta, but he's like not quite mad, almost like he's faking it, which kind of bothers me. It's just, you know, I want to know he's really mad. No, but I mean, it's just there's something weird about it, which is kind of the problem when you have fixed faces as opposed to something like figure arts where you can choose them. Um, articulation's pretty much the same if you're familiar with these. You can, I don't know if you can hear it, you probably can't, but they're like, they have clicky joints here for the hinges. You get a good range of motion, swiveling here, you got your elbow joint here, little ball joint here on the fist, leg joint has the little ball joint here and then you can I don't know it's like I wish you could can you feel it can you feel the clicking guys like it has a clicky joint which feels kind of satisfying and then this little joint here um waist articulation oh sorry about that lost focus and then you know the head can move all around and do weird creepy stuff um the thing I wanted to draw attention to is this one's pretty solid actually but um a lot of these figures have horrible loose joint problems which is the first I've encountered in this line so far um uh, just before I forget, he also does come with two interchangeable hands. As you saw on him, he has the closed fist, and then you have just two open fists. Almost every figure has versions of these. Um, now, Ultra Instinct Goku is one I was pretty excited for because it's a new form that I really don't own any figures of. Um, and it looks pretty okay. It's definitely got leaning towards the silver side. Um, I'm sure that there's somebody out there that knows, like, oh, it's definitively this color. But I feel like it's one of those ones where it, sometimes it looks silver, sometimes white. Um, I kind of prefer when it looked white because it kind of made it look more deity-like to me. And this, like, silver paint reminds me a lot of the older, like, 90s cheap Dragon Ball figures or some of the Japanese ones you'd see in, like, Beckett Dragon Ball Collector. Like, it kind of feels like that. Um, but it looks okay, you know. Uh, this... Obviously, this chest, like, this is weird to talk about. Like, this is just, just, just cover up there. No, but it, it looks super pale. I feel like it should be more battle damaged looking because he was so battle damaged when this happened. I don't know. Um, but just detail wise, I think he's okay. Like, I think the colors are okay. He looks a little cheap, a little different than some of the other ones. I feel it's kind of weird. Um, but I am more disappointed by this figure because. Okay, he's got just kind of a stern expression on his face, which makes a ton of sense. This is more or less like 90% of the expression Goku had during Ultra Instinct, but it just looks so dead inside. Like, I feel like there could have just been some tweaking to it to give that sort of stern, focused look, but not looking so vacant. If that makes any sense, that could be a personal thing. Uh, but this one, same articulation as Vegeta, so I'm not going to bother going over it, but he has very loose legs. Um, so much so that both him and Gohan, when I took them out of box, I just pulled on it and they exploded. Um, in which case, almost all of their limbs came off. Um, it reminded me of that scene in uh, Jingle All the Way when he gets the bootleg Turbo Man doll and it just falls out. So that was really disappointing. Again, Gohan has the same articulation, and he exploded even more. Like, I think it was Goku's legs just came off, but this guy, one of his arms came off. So I was like, holy crap. So yeah, he's he's a little bit weak. Um, I mean, maybe they're trying to go conceptual to like the way Gohan was weaker at the beginning of Super before he started training. That's what it is. Man, it's a meta figure, guys. You should definitely buy it. Like, not like a meta human, but just like meta concept. But he's kind of just got a default screaming face, you know. He's an okay figure detail-wise, I would say. Um, it's not my favorite form of Gohan, the sort of, you know, 
not Mystic Gohan, just kind of, that's a really good way of describing that. That was a weird way of saying that, but you know what I mean. Like, it's not my favorite version of Super Saiyan Gohan, so I'm not as stoked for this figure, but I think the details are pretty solid on it. I think they do a pretty good job at, you know, mimicking the, the cloth feeling, even though it's a cartoon, but you know what I mean. Like, the way that they have folds on it, and it's not just a flat plastic look, which is nice. Um, and I think that they do a good job of capturing the faces. Um, it's not a bad face to be stuck on. I think of the three in this wave, this one is the one I'm the most okay with, like I don't have too many huge problems with it. Again, the Super Saiyan hair is a little bit glossy, it reminds me of those old school Dragon Ball figures. Um, he also includes, along with Goku, uh, those two extra hands, like you can see they both have, come on Gohan, don't embarrass, he's embarrassing me, you're embarrassing me in front of your dad, and your dad's clone thing, and your dad's clone fusion, not clone fusion, just fusion, uh, but both Gohan and Goku come with these different hands, they basically look the same, they're just, you know, those little hands. Okay, so now we have Future Trunks, and I just recently reviewed the figure art, so I'll probably have a little, you know, card up in the corner so you can go take a look at that. And even though I already own that, this is my favorite, one of my favorite characters, and I really like this arc, so I was still excited to have different versions of this character. And this figure, I think, is one of the most disappointing to me. He, all, he has the most loose joints I've ever had on any of these. Like, these ones feel loose, but these are the ones are like, okay, they're actually in the neighborhood now of being loose. Um, and his head sculpt is okay, like the angry face is okay, but what is with this like line they give here? Because he's got like that Widow's Peak, like a little bit like Vegeta's in there, but they like, oh, let's just make it straight across. Like, what is that? It's so distracting. It makes it look like he's wearing a wig. And this like attempt to make his hair seem messy also seems weird. The details on the clothes and stuff are okay. Like, I'm not like too mad at them, but yeah, it's just kind of a disappointment. Um, and the, the looseness of him, too, is really annoying. So I think he's probably, of this whole bunch in the both series, I think the weakest figure I got. Like, literally, the weakest. Oh, God, everyone started. Uh, you know, with that and this weird bit here. Um, he does include more than some of the others. He's got the standard fists on him. He's got these fists. And then you have fists for holding. Or they're not fists anymore, I guess. But hands for holding um, the sword. You have this bit here, which is just the sword sheathed. And it's really simple. It just goes on like that. And then this bit just pops out, it's like blank, it's not the broken version or anything. Um, but you can take that out if you want to display him with the sword, but you know, there's no, nothing in the sheath. And you get the sword here, which has actually a nice silver paint to it, but... There we go, couldn't get the camera to focus on it. So yeah, that kind of, that bothers me a little bit. But yeah, he comes with a little bit more than some of the others. Now he's going to embarrass me like Gohan. Come on, Trunks, go blind side. Now you're going to embarrass yourself in front of your dad and your dad's fusion and Brawly. Okay, here's regular Vegito. I think his facial expression seems weird. Like, there's something off about it. Like, they're going for, like, you know, classic Dragon Ball, screaming mad. But he looks more like he's like, ah, 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 ah. that was a weird voice. But just, I don't know. It seems weird. Um, everything else, though, is mostly fine. I don't have too many loose joint problems with this guy. Um, the details on the clothes are not bad, you know. He comes with these extra hands here. And also, he has, I think he was the one that might have gotten mixed up, but they, uh, the ones that come with Brawly's arms do have extra open hands for him, which is nice. And he comes with his signature little energy sword. I didn't mean to do that, but this one attaches like a hand, so you just have to take this out and attach it via here, and it's not like the figure art where you have like a, you know, a karate chop hand that slides into it. But, you know, this guy's just like the most middle-of-the-road figure of the bunch for me. You know, he's got the same articulation, not as loose, but he's got a weird facial expression. I, I kind of just wish that this was one figure, just Super Saiyan and regular Vegito. Alright, here we have Goku Black, another one I was excited for even though I already own the figure art. Um, but he's not so bad. I think they actually did a pretty good job. Like, if he has to be stuck in one facial expression, I think this menacing look, menacing look, excuse me, works really well, especially with this sort of like, power, unlimited power head, head, hand, there we go. But so yeah, this one's not too bad look-wise, I would say. I made it a pretty good job on the details on the clothes. I like how the way I have it, his hips kind of like jutting, like he's got attitude, which is kind of funny. Um, articulation's the same, not too many loose joint problems with this guy, which is at least nice. Um, you have this hand here, the closed fist, which is on him. These are actually the ones that default to him when you get him but he also comes with another closed fist and another open fist and then his signature little energy beam as well which also attaches in a similar fashion where you just have to take it off like it's an arm okay now sort of the main event this is the brawly build a figure that come with all of these um you get the arms, legs, and then the head's one of them, and the chest piece is another. And the necklace is also a separate piece, which is just kind of weird. He's honestly a pretty solid figure. Pretty impressive. Not too many loose joint problems. Not terribly hard to put together. Um, 
I'm, I'm mostly pleased with it. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty good timing, too, considering the movie just came out and whatnot. The articulation largely remains the same as the bigger guys. There is some weirdness here, like with the muscles. It makes it more hindered, you know, because you can't really bend these as much. And these are kind of weird to move around a little bit. And then you have, like, this piece here hindering this. But, like... In principle, he has the same joints. They just don't go as much, which is kind of like in the show. It's like he's just not as nimble looking, even though he can be quite fast. Um, but I think this is a pretty solid build to figure. Um, it doesn't have as many loose joints as some of the actual figures I got. Um, it's a pretty neat figure to have, kind of a good incentivizer, I'm sure, for people that are super excited about the movie. I don't have too many problems with, like, the head, you know, other than you can't really move it that much, again, because of how bulky he is, but, like, I just kind of wish that you could move his head up a little bit so that I could have him looking up and stuff, but this facial expression seems pretty solid for Broly, and the the hair's pretty well done. It kind of reflects that golden green look to it. So yeah, this was a pretty cool build to figure. Um, I'm happy to have it. I think it's neat. Um, but yeah, overall, these waves are definitely mixed. I think there's some neat figures in this wave in terms of like characters you're getting. But I was very disappointed in this wave that they felt so poorly constructed. I mean, Bandai figures have always been iffy, but I was pretty impressed by the early Dragon Stars wave, especially with how the Power Rangers legacy figures had been so iffy, and it made me wonder why they could make figures like this for Dragon Ball but not Power Rangers. But these ones feel more like what they were doing with Power Rangers, like some weird details, weird lack of details, really loose joints feeling cheap. You know, I think that if you really are into these figures and you want something cheaper than figure arts, I can recommend at least checking out some of your favorites. You know, like 20 bucks for this. I think him I would go for the figure art. His is just so weird. But for him, I wouldn't mind spending just 20 bucks for that instead of the figure art, which is like 60 or more unless you can find a good deal. But yeah, bottom line is this is just kind of a disappointing wave. And also I know I've been real spotty on reviewing these waves. That's because I found these kind of weird to find. Like I found the first few series pretty easy, but it wasn't until recently I've tracked down most of the backlog. Log. I was fortunate enough to find these guys on GameStop all at once so I could bring you the review uh, But the other ones I've had to largely track down at Walgreens because if they're on Amazon their prices are either super hiked up and they just kind of disappeared from retailers aside from Walgreens until recently when I've seen like series two at Walmart. So just to explain that at the end, I might just do one giant review with all the backlog ones I have and just kind of cover the series in general if that would be something you guys are interested in once I track down these last few. But anyway, I hope that that ramble didn't bore you too much and my point for these made sense just kind of only if you want ones to save money, but it's kind of a disappointing wave, to be honest, other than the Brawly Build-A-Figure being kind of neat. Anyway, thanks for putting up with my ramble. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to climb the steps, entering that bell, to get notifications for all my videos. Until next time, Dawson Rider, signing out.